Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Stefan and I'm a developer advocate on the iOS team here at Stream. Today we want to build a complete iMessage clone from scratch using SwiftUI and the Stream Chat SDK. We want to build in all functionality that is also present in iMessage. Well, not all functionality because we don't want to compete with Apple, but we want to showcase how easy it is to set up a completely custom chat UI with the SDK from Stream right from scratch. So let's get started. This tutorial includes a few steps, so let's break them down. First, we need to configure the Stream Chat Swift UI SDK and add it to our app. We will use the Swift Package Manager for that, or in short, SPM. Then we need to link up the backend to our app. We can then dive into the UI, first creating the header and then adding a list of channels. We will then even have some fun and add swipe actions to the channel list, as well as pinning channels to the top of the list. Let's get started with the first step. The first thing we will do is create a new Xcode project. Select iOS and app. Give it the name iMessage clone. Make sure that Swift UI and Swift are selected. Find a nice place to save it and hit create. Great job. First step is done. I think we earned a high five for that. Now we can add the Stream Chat Swift UI SDK to our app. So in our project, we can go in the project and check package dependencies. We have nothing right here, so let's add one. We need to enter the package URL. Gladly I prepared that already, so simply head to the GitHub repository. I'll also add a link in the description below. Copy the link and enter the package URL. You can now select different strategies. For now, we will add the branch of main to have the latest version available and hit add package. This will take a while, so let's head back and speed that up. We can hit add package next and we're done. Next, we'll add a link to the backend. For this tutorial, we won't create our own backend because that would extend the scope of this tutorial. So we, instead, we will reuse the tutorial we have at our website. So if you head over to getstream.io, go to chat messaging, you can see the list of our SDKs here. As you can see, we offer SDKs for basically every platform there is. For this, we will use the Swift UI one. There's some details about it, but we don't need that here. We just want to start the tutorial because here we have the steps we need. As you can see, we create the project, we add the package, and then we integrate the backend. I will speed this part up and I will explain to you each step after that. Okay, that went very well. I, of course, did write everything myself and did not copy paste anything here. So let's get through what I've done here. First thing we did was we created an app delegate. For those who only live by the Swift UI way, you might be new to this. App delegate has been a thing in the UI kit world for very long. Uh, it's basically a place where you can execute code to start off your application. Specifically, this piece here. Uh, the application did finish launching with options is important. And as you can see, we initialize the stream chat here. The stream chat is an object that you need to initialize first thing when the app is starting though. So this point is the perfect fit for that. And what are we doing here? We are initializing the stream chat with a chat client that we create here as a computed property. And we do some configuration. First, we use a config with an API key. We are reusing the one from the tutorial here because we don't want to create our own backend. And then we have an identifier. Uh, we have the client here. 
uh, and we're returning that. So after that, it's already set up. The second thing we're doing is we're connecting a user because we don't want to log in every time we're starting up the app. We're using an existing one and we're getting the token. Again, we're reusing one from the other tutorial and then we're connecting the user. In this case, Luke Skywalker, as you will see most of the content that is in the client is Star Wars based. So we're using Luke Skywalker as an example. We're connecting that and in case there's an error, we, we lock that. And that's all we need actually. We then created an empty factory and I will get to what that does in a second. But uh, we can reuse that in our clone here, in our app, uh, to initialize the stream chat SDK with that. We have not talked about it too much yet, but the view factory is the place where you can customize the SDK and inject your own views into the system. Right now it still shows an error, but we can easily fix this. It doesn't conform to the protocol view factory and the only requirement here is that it has a chat client of type chat client. In order for this to work, we need to import the stream chat SDK. Now it still won't build because it will now say that it does not have any initializers. Luckily, we have a nice mechanism for dependency injection. So let's use it. We can simply use the injected property wrapper, added a, a key path to it, which is actually called chat client. And that's all you need to have the chat client available inside the view factory. Step one is done. Let's run and build the app now. I select an iPhone 12 and when we run it, we see it still shows the content view, which makes sense because in our app we are defining the content view. Now we want to quickly show a list of possible chat channels and luckily the SDK provides just the right view for that right out of the box. As you can see, we can create this and it only requires a view factory, which we luckily created. So we will add a new instance into that. And if we build now, you can see the stream chat is initializing. We're getting the channel list right out of the box. It's scrollable, it looks nice. And now we have a clean slate where we can start to customize the UI to look like iMessage. The first thing we want to do for customization is add a nice header here that looks like the one from iMessage. So a good place to start when we are starting here from the tutorial is to go to the component docs where we offer documentation on how to customize each of the components. There's also one for the channel list header and I'll include that in the description below. But we are not here to read documentation, we're here to implement stuff. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to create a new file and make it a Swift UI view and we call this the iMessage channel list header. We actually can get rid of the preview because we're not actually creating a view, but we're creating a toolbar content, which still has a body, which does not return a view, but toolbar content. What this allows us to do is create multiple toolbar items and place them from left to right. So the first one will have the placement of navigation bar leading. And now we can add the item. It will be a button that has an action that will be implemented later on. And the label, uh, the first one will be of type text. We missed the placement argument here. So let's add that. Okay, so this is the first item. The next one will be another toolbar item. Now this will be the principal one, meaning it will be shown in the middle. And again, we need the placement principal. And the content will simply be a text that has a title. Uh, so we need to add the argument of title here. Simple string should be sufficient. Let's make this bold. 
All right, so now we have the title in the middle and on the right, we want to show an item that allows us to create new messages. So that will be the trailing item. It will be a button again that has an action that will be defined later on. And now we create an image system name. And I think this one is called square and pencil. And we're done with the view for now. We need one more file though, which will be called the I message channel list header modifier. Now this convenient name is required because we will extend the view factory in a second to use this modifier. It will once again have a title of type string that we can put in there. And then it doesn't have the computed property, but it has a func called body, which will receive some content of type content. And in order to have that available, we need to extend not from the view protocol, but from the channel list header view modifier protocol. It automatically imports the stream chat Swift UI here, which is nice. And now we want to return some view here. So saying the content, give it a toolbar of type iMessage channel list header. And we're putting in the title. All right, these are the two files we needed to create. The build succeeded already, but we need to do one more thing. And that is to add this method to our view factory to use our custom implementation. So we can actually type in and we already see autocomplete doing its magic and have the make channel list header view modifier. And we create our iMessage channel list header view modifier here. We could reuse the title, but we want to give it a custom one called messages. And now we simply need to create I'll copy the type here to have that we're building again. And when you take a look, this is how it looked before. And let's run it again. And we can see we have our wonderful header file here with very little customization needed. Great. Let's continue to implement a custom channel list here. To get this started, we need to do two things. The first one is to create a custom UI for the channel list item. The second one is to hook it up in the iMessage view factory to let the SDK know to use this custom view. Before we start implementing the UI, let's have a look at the finished product first. We're implementing these items here. And as we can see, it has an avatar here on the left and then a title row with a title text, a timestamp and a disclosure indicator to show that you can click it as well as the text on the bottom together with a mute icon when the channel is muted. Now that we have seen this, we can start with implementation in code. Let's start off by creating a new file. It's a Swift UI view and we are calling it iMessage channel list item view. Let's resume the preview first. We need a few variables to make our channel list item work. I'll prepare a snippet for that. And as we can see, we need the channel name, the avatar as an image, when the last message was sent, whether there are unread messages, the last message and the is muted button. So previews are not working for now, but as I love previews, I prepared a few so we can have a look at how the channel looks. And before we hit resume, we know that we need an image here, which we have not yet imported. And the perfect place to put this is the preview assets folder here. I'm taking this wonderful circle. You can choose any image you want. It would just be here for our previews to work. Now when I hit resume, 
it takes a few seconds. And as we can see, the previews are now working. We're using dark mode, light mode, and a few variants that we will see when we create the view. So let's do just that. We already saw that at the root, uh, there is an H stack, right? We want to align or arrange the items from left to right. The first item we create is the unread indicator. It's a simple Z stack. And if there are unread messages, we create a circle and give it a fixed frame width. The next one is the avatar. I also prepared a snippet for that. And as you can see, it takes the image and does some frame setting and makes it resizable and gives it a content mode fill and clips it with a clip shape of circle. Now for the text parts, we need a VStack to arrange them from top to bottom. The title line has the channel name first, then a spacer, and then it creates another H stack with the last message and the system icon of Chevron, right? Which is not working because we're using a variable here, which we have not really yet created. So let's do that. It's called last message stamp. And all it does is just format the date to a better time. When we resume the preview, we will see how that looks. Very nice. What's missing is the bottom part. So let's also create that. Great. Now, one thing I don't think is perfect is we have some spacing in between here. So let's first fix that. The alignment here needs to be, I think, of leading. And the spacing will be set to zero. This looks much better. As we can see for the text here, we simply made a text view, gave it some modifiers, gave it a fixed size that it can spread vertically. And for the frame, it should span as much space as it gets, because if the muted property is set to true, we will add this bell icon here. That's also taken from the SF symbols catalog. And the end result looks very nice. So let's finally give it a little bit of padding. So I think we just need some vertical padding give it a little bit. And one thing we need to do is set some background. Because if we don't do that, then the parts where spacers are used won't be clickable. So for the background, we create a color. Let's take the color here from system background and everything should still look very nice. This is why I love previews because while coding, we directly see the impact on different form factors and light and dark mode at the same time. We finished up the UI. We have two more steps to do now. The first thing is to make our item clickable and navigate to the channel details. And the second one is hooking it up in the view factory. Let's start off with the clickable item. We create a new file, make it a Swift UI view, and we call it iMessage channel list item. This will be the container that holds our recently created UI. We can get rid of the preview here because we simply want to do the reaction to the clicking here. First, we need some variables here. This might look confusing for now, but this is basically what we get from the view factory. We need to import stream chat and stream chat Swift UI here. And from that we can build on to create the UI. We want to create a Z stack where we have the item on the root here. So we have our recently created iMessage channel list item view, giving it the name, the avatar, the last message, the unread count, and the text of the latest message, together with the information whether a channel is muted. We're adding some trailing padding and a tap gesture that calls the parents on item tab function. The second thing in this Z stack here is a navigation link. 
that uses the channel selection info as a tag. When this is clicked, it will use the binding to the selected channel to notify the SDK which channel was clicked, so it knows how to navigate to this. It will then call the channel destination that we also get from the SDK. Let's head back to the iMessage view factory and override the make channel list item function. As you can see, it takes a bunch of parameters and from that on, we can simply hand them over to the channel list item we just created. It will get the channel, the channel name, the avatar, the channel destination, the on item tab and the selected channel binding. If we run this now, we can see we get a lot out of the box. We have the search functionality, we have the functionality here to click now. We have our nice looking UI by simply replacing this piece of code here. All the channels are clickable now. Scrolling works like a charm. Very nice. The next thing we want to do is to implement swipe actions in the list. So let's have a look first at how the end result should look like. Here we have the app and we can actually swipe either right to show the option to pin channels or swipe left to either mute, unmute or delete a channel. We will again take a few steps to do that. We'll create the UI first, then hook it up in the view factory. Then we will create a view model that handles the tap on the swipe actions. So let's get started. First, let's create the view for the leading swipe. We'll create a new file of the Swift UI view, call it leading swipe area view, and continue from here. We can delete the preview, and then we first need some variables again. We will get those handed down from the SDK, and it will be the channel, the width of the button, the ID of the swipe channel and the button tapped function. It says there's an error because we don't import the stream chat SDK yet. So let's do just that. Now onto the UI. It's actually very simple to do this. At the root, there will be an H stack. Then we can create an action item button, which is a view of the SDK that takes the simple image name we will take the pin.fill system image and then you can create the action. For this, we will go with button tapped and handle the channel in. Then we can customize this a little bit more. For example, we can give it a frame with the width of button width. We need to add the dot in front, of course. Then we will have to set the foreground color modifier to make it white and we can set a background of color.yellow. Next, we need only to set a spacer because we want the leading swipe area to be at the left of the row. We will repeat these steps for the trailing swipe area view as well. So let's create a new Swift UI view, call it trailing swipe area view. Again, delete the preview because we don't need this. We will again have a few variables here. It's again the channel, the button width, the swipe channel ID, the left button and the right button tab because we will have the left one, which is the mute icon and the right one, which is the delete icon. Again, let's import stream chat here and the arrows will go away. I will speed up the implementation now because we've already seen it and it basically goes the same way. <sighs> okay, one typo, that was not too bad. As you can see, we added the action item buttons here for both the bell and the trash icon, hooked up the functionality and added the space at the left because these are the views that should be shown on the far right of the icon. Very nice. The UI is ready, so let's hook it up in the view factory. We already expanded the SDK with the make channel list item function. So we can do the same for the make leading swipe action view, which is also a function to extend from the original view factory. The only thing we need to do here is to return 
our leading swipe area view. As you can see, the arguments we have here are basically the ones that we're getting from the SDK. Same goes for the trading swipe actions, so I'll speed that up again. Very nice. We can build now and run the app to see how that looks. The app still looks nice and if we try to swipe, well, nothing happens. So what's wrong here? The problem actually lies in other implementation of the channel list item here, because we need to tell it to be swipeable. We can make use of the SDK here by setting this to a constant of list item and instead returning something called chat channel swipeable list item. Now this is a very nice view we get that automatically gives us the swipeable actions and we can simply define here as we can see two generics so the factory which is of type view factory and the channel list item which is of type view we're specifying those here handing them down as parameters we can define the actions for trailing and leading swipes and with that, when we run again, we will now see we can swipe, we can swipe left, we can swipe right. Notice that there is a little gap here, so we need to fix this. But overall, it looks very nice, very smooth. We can do this. So let's change the spacing in the trailing swipe area view. I know the problem is that we need to give this a spacing of zero because per default SwiftUI gives an htx some spacing. And if we have a look now, it looks very nice. Now the last thing we need to do is to hook up those actions with real code. So let's do just that. To separate out the code, let's create a view model for that. So we can create a new file, which will be a Swift file and call it iMessage channel list view model. So the class will be called iMessage channel list view model and it will actually be of type chat channel list view model. As we can see, this is one from the stream chat Swift UI SDK. Now one advantage of having an open source library is that we can have a look at the definition. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of functionality that we get for free when we just conform to that protocol. We will get a list of the channels. We will get the currently selected channel, which will also be a binding or a published property so we can change that and some other functionality. For now, we only have to implement one thing and this is the mute action. This function will take a channel as an input. It will take the controller from a chat client that we do not yet have, but luckily we have this wonderful dependency injection mechanism. So we can simply inject the chat client here, which will fix this error. We still need to import so the stream chat SDK as well. And then we can get the controller and mute the channel if it's not muted and unmute it if it is muted. So this code is pretty straightforward. It takes the controller and unmutes the channel with a completion closure, either printing an error, or if we have successfully unmuted or muted the channel, it will print just that. Now we will use this view model in our app, but I wanna say one thing first. If we take a look at the app, we're actually using the chat channel list view, which we get from the SDK. This is a great way to get a quick setup without doing too much customization. What we want to do now is we want to dive deeper into the SDK to see how we can customize things further by implementing things ourselves. This will be the starting point. So let's first take a view factory as the parameter here. And actually we need our iMessage view factory. And then let's create a state object here, which will be the view model. Uh, of type iMessage channel list view model. And we can actually initialize it right here. 
So we can even fix this and say, okay, we have the view factory here for the preview. Now what we're gonna do is integrate a new item from the SDK here. Now we wanna call the channel list ourselves. We can simply do this by using this view from the SDK. And this will throw an error or just throw an error because we don't yet implement it. But with that, we can now say, okay, we get the factory here. We set the channels that we get from the view model, select the channel, all these items that we get for free by using the view model. And one thing we actually need to implement is this channel header loader. So let's do just that. This will be a state object again, called channel header loader of type channel header loader. That's it. What the channel header loader does is it will automatically take care of caching and buffering the images that will be downloaded as the avatars for the people. And it uses the wonderful Nuke library under the hood that we can highly recommend using. And we will leave a link in the description as well. With that, we have this view ready and we simply need to hook it up here in the clone app function. So we won't use the chat channel list view, but we'll use the content view give it the view factory, initialize it right here, and we're good to go. So let's run the app. And as we can see, we're missing one thing, the header here is not there anymore, but we have the wonderful swipe actions. We can scroll, that works right off the box, so very nice. So let's fix the navigation view here first. In the content view, we need to embed this in a navigation view and indent that. And now we need to add the toolbar ourselves. We can simply do this by using our header here with the title of messages. And if we run the app again, we see everything is there. It's scrollable. You can swipe on it. It looks very smooth and very nice. We can even Hit the mute button here and we will have the mute appear or unmute it again and the muting will disappear again. So one thing that is not working yet is the delete channel and I'll show you a different way of implementing things for that. We will once again make use of the functionality we get from the view model for free. So let's first close the preview here and make some more space. Now the view model gives us a nice variable, which is called alert shown. It's actually a binding and it makes sense to show an alert as the name suggests. That makes sense because for the delete action, we definitely want to make sure the user doesn't tap it accidentally. So we'll add an alert here. We will use the is presented property here. And for that, we will have the view model dot alert shown, which is a binding. And from there on, we can show the following content. We want to switch over another property of the view model, which is called the channel alert type. Now, in case we encounter the delete channel property here with the channel, we can say, okay, we will return an alert with the text title of delete channel, asking the user, hey, are you sure you want to delete this channel? And now we have the delete function we're calling. And in case the user wants to cancel the action, we also offer this functionality here. We also need to add a default action here. So let's say default. We will return a alert of type default error alert. What? The errors still appear because we forgot that we need to define this here, case let. And now if we build, the error should disappear. We can now run again. And we will see when we swipe here and hit the trash icon, our little alert here is shown. Very nice. We're done with the swipe action implementation for now. So let's jump to the next topic, which is the pinned channels. Actually, wait a second. Let's have a look at the app again. We can see 
that at the top here there is some white space appearing and also the title here is not expanding as it would in the regular iMessage app. So we should quickly fix this. Actually it's pretty easy because in our toolbar we're defining the title manually. We don't need to do this because we can simply say navigation title here with messages then remove this one here from the channel list header and take this away and just remove the placement principal item build again i think there will be one more error because we need to remove this from the header view modifier as well which we actually don't need anymore but let's simply remove this for now and build again and now we have the messages here it scrolls nicely everything is still working cool we fixed this now let's head over to the pinned channels before we start let's have a look again at the end result that we want to achieve we have the list of channels here and now we want to be able to pin them so that they appear here we want to pin multiple ones and as you can see it takes a nice grid we can also expand that so the channels will be arranged here in this nice three column grid all right for the implementation let's switch things up a little bit and start off with the view model and the implementation we need to do there then we will create the ui and add some more functionality in the content view to make everything work together nicely Let's head over to the view model first. So for now we've been using the view models channels, which are of type lazy cached map collection of chat channels. Now, if we think about what the pin channels should be, it should be a unique set of options. So a set would make sense here, but we want to keep the order. So the disadvantage of a regular set is that it doesn't keep the order of its items which is why we will have a look at the Swift Collections library, which is a very nice library offered by some of the contributors to the Swift language itself. And it actually has an ordered set here, which is just what we need. So let's integrate this library first. We will open up Xcode again and hit the project and the package dependencies and add a new one. We will take the link from the GitHub repo, copy this, add this at the top here and say, okay, we want to take this up to the next major version. That looks fine and add it to the project. We only need the ordered collections. So let's take this one and we're done. All right. So in our view model, let's define the first property here and it will actually be a published variable called pint channels and it will be an ordered set that we take from the ordered collections library of type chat channel and we say sorry let's define it as a type here and we are initializing it as an empty set now of course we also need the non pinned channels so let's implement those next these will be out of type lazy cached map collection of chat channel and let's make this a computed property and we're taking the channels we're filtering them for those the pinned channels do not contain and then convert it to a lazy cached map. The fact that we already say that the pinned channels are a published property and the channels is a published property as well, allows us to leave this out of here. So we don't need to make this a published property, but it automatically will be. So the last thing we need to do is add a function that reacts to the tab on the pinned channels. All right, we give this a channel and what we're going to do here is that if the pinned channels 
contains the channel, then we say we want to remove the channel. And this will automatically update both properties here. And if it's not the case, then we will say pen channels append channel. Next up is the UI. So let's create a new view, new file, Swift UI view, and call it pinned channels view. We can get rid of the previews for now because we don't have any data on that in the view model. We need a few variables here, and those are the following. We need the view model, we need the channel header loader, and for that we need to import stream chat Swift UI because we want to show images and be efficient about that. And then we also need the view factory because we want to navigate from this to the detail view again. Okay, the layout will be a grid. So let's define the structure of our grid first. So for the structure, we can create an array here. And what we want to do is we want to have a grid item of flexible width. And you actually want this three times. We need a lazy V grid here with the columns defined as the column structure. For the content, we'll do a for each over the view model dot pin channels and give the channel in and create the detail here. Now the detail will be rather similar to the channel list item. We will have a Z stack that will have the image and the text first and have an empty navigation view that will take care of the navigation part. So let's first define a button that will set the selected channel on the view model. So the channel dot channel selection info and the label here will be an, it'll actually be a V stack because we want the image and the text. And we're saying, okay, we want to use the channel header for that. So the channel header loader dot image for the channel. Then we add a few modifiers here, which I will speed up. That should be pretty self-explanatory. And for the text, we will say we want the view model dot name for channel, which gives us a nice description of the channel that we have here. The font size will be a caption and we make it the secondary foreground color. All right, we have the button now. Now what we still need is to have the navigation link here. So let's implement that. We'll have the navigation link. We need the tag here, which will be the channel dot channel selection info. We will have for the selection a binding. And luckily we have our view model available. And it will be the selected channel. Uh, as the destination, we will have the factory create the channel destination for us. As the label, we're again handing it an empty view. Now the error appears because we need to add the channel dot channel selection info into this closure. When we build now, we see it works. Very nice. The last step is to add that to our content view. For now, we only have the channel list here. This is scrollable by default, but now we want to add something on top of it that scrolls with it. So let's first disable scrolling here. Instead, we will embed this in a scroll view Check the indentation again. And on top of the channel list, we will add our pin channels. 
So if for our view model, the pinned channels dot count will be larger than zero, we will simply add the pinned channels view here, give it the view model, give it the channel header loader and give it our view factory. Let's run this. This looks good, but if we now tap on that, nothing happens. The reason is that we didn't hook it up in the channel list yet. We need to do two more things. For the leading swipe button tapped, we actually need to call our function in the view model. Like this. And while we're at it, we still have the problem that we're always showing all channels in the channel list. So if we take the non-pinned channels here, everything should work because we're only showing the ones that are not pinned. Now we can swipe here, click this, and we have Han Solo shown, we have the sum group shown. Let's add the iOS developers here and Darth Maul. Everything looks nice. We have the list here. We can scroll it, it stays on top here. And when we click it, we see the detail area. That was the last part and now we're finished with the complete implementation of the channel list. Congratulations. Let's do a quick recap of what we achieved in this video. We first hooked up the app with a backend. We then created the channel list with a specific custom channel list item. Then we even added some swipe actions and pinning channels to the top. It's amazing how fast and easy it is to do all this with the highly customizable stream chat SDK. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. If you don't want to miss part two, where we will implement the message list, then you should definitely subscribe to the channel. Also head over to getstream.io for more details and to create your free maker account to get started with creating your own applications with the StreamChat SDK. Have a great rest of your day and see you in the next video.